You can start right there and come down this back side. Fire has, has been used a long time in history. Uh, a lot of the old farmers used it uh, basically because it was uh, cheap. Uh, it uh, gets rid of old uh, vegetation, uh, suppresses woody vegetation, uh, and uh, the uh, plants are more nutritious uh, when they come back up. See right there is that little oak. See the one with the leaves still on yeah, it? That's yeah. a little white oak. You know, and I, that very well could have survived and I will do everything I can when I come back in here to dodge that little dude. When you look at a burn on a field, it ne not necessarily has to, uh, you know, incinerate everything. We're looking for a, a, a mosaic across the land. Uh, it's okay if fire uh, skips some places and, and maybe uh, burns up others. You know, if I've got the scattered oaks in here, yeah, uh, intermingled with with open areas, man, that's excellent. You know, because yeah. that way we've got a mass crop and we've got uh, a bushy, weedy area. Man, that's just excellent. We had a really good burn, and as far as fire, uh, timing and safety is uh, a real concern. We don't want to um, burn during the nesting season, so typically our burn dates are in the late winter, early spring. Uh, what we burned here uh, was in uh, around the 1st of March, uh, and basically we put a fire line around these fields uh, using a tractor and a disc, uh, and it contains the fire. Uh, we get fire permits uh, and check the weather conditions, and. Uh, the wind's right, uh, we uh, light it up. We're, today is the third day of March. Fire, if it's done at the right time, will give you a good kill. It will set back succession basically to the ground. Uh, anytime you burn, you may think you're burning all the vegetation. You, you're burning all the above ground vegetation, but there's a seed bank in every soil of it. And a lot of people think, well, that's going to be empty ground forever. That, that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, here in the next, I, I, I say, 40, uh, 40 to 30 to 45 days, we're going to have green up. And in that area, there are going to be seeds that are going to jump, jump out of that. The, the area we're burning now, depending on how good a burn we get, I may not burn it again for another three years. So, and that's the whole idea. You don't want to burn all your habitat, but spot it. That way you've got different levels of succession all at the same time. Um, what we're looking at here is a lot of bodoc trees. Those are really thorny individuals, uh, bad for a tractor tire. Um, but by providing a, a slow creeping fire through here, uh, it killed uh, practically every one of them. Uh, providing this fire line, uh, creating a fire that slowly creeps through there, uh, typically in early spring, uh, outside of nesting season. But as that sap comes up through these smaller saplings, uh, that's the best time to kill them. More species will use a more weedy field than, than a high canopy, high forested area. Those are, gosh, they're beautiful places. Uh, but, you know, there's more species that can be found in a, in a weedy, overgrown, uh, overgrown field than in that high canopy. You look at a field, uh, it serves as many purposes uh, for birds, uh, brood habitat for uh, uh, baby turkeys, uh, and uh, habitat for uh, deer. Uh, right now in June, uh, the does are coming off with their uh, uh, fawns, and, and this is exactly where they're going to be. Man. There are some plants out here that are, that are more nutritious than, I, I would say, soybeans, especially uh, plants like corn. So some of this uh, early successional growth could get as high as 30% crude protein. Uh, this year's, this is one year's growth of a Chickasaw plum. Look at this. You might well say, well, why are you letting that grow and not letting the privet grow? Well, this one, this is a native species. Two, this produces a large fruit that multiple animals will partake of. Deer, turkey, possums, groundhogs, everything will come and eat the fruit off of these. But this will, it'll produce a, a basically a, a little, a, a plum that's about the size of the end of your thumb. So in this fire line here, you'll get, um, ragweed. Uh, it's, it's got the genus name ambrosia, which means uh, food of the gods. So when somebody named that plant, they must have got, got it right. But 
This, uh, in the fall, this, uh, this plant will provide many seeds for the quail. And, and, and this will be just dominating this uh, fire break. Yes, uh, if we look, we got these clumps of grass, but then if we get down in here below it, we got areas of dirt. And that's what, that's what the, the advantage of these clump forming species do. The small quail and the small turkey, especially when they're, uh, when they're still in their down, before they get their feathers, they're having to scurry along the ground. But in these areas where you have these clumps, clump forming species, the native warm season grass, you'll have a clump of grass and then an open area for those little guys to get in here and scurry around. I mean, they're not walking up here, they're walking right down here on the ground and they can get around in these little funnels. They're still protected from above from avian predators. Right here, it's, it's a type of bean, you know, that's not a soybean. Uh, that's, that's your native bean and, and quail really love that. It is charred, uh, but it's good leaf out. So this, this persimmon, this small persimmon clump, these are probably all the same uh, from the same clump. So, uh, you know, we, these have male and female males. We don't know which one of these is gonna be, but these do have a good, uh, uh, relatively good wildlife value. The deer, the possums, birds, all will eat the fruit from this tree. The plant community really responds with a burn. Uh, you can't really get that with a mow. Diversity is, is what you're trying to shoot for. Uh, one monoculture of fescue across the landscape is not good for wildlife. Well, all the animals have a, have a choice here, so we're giving them one year, three years, and maybe five years. So we're playing to the rabbits, the quail, and the deer, uh, plus the turkeys. If I can have an impact to, to, to another covey of quail makes it through the winter or another rabbit gets to make it through or a duck has food to eat or a squirrel has a tree to climb and nuts to eat and turkey have another tree to roost in, I, I've said it once, that'll make me a happy man. The greatest joy is, is spending all this time and, uh, and going up to the parking lot and seeing a guy dragging out a deer. And you're knowing that you influence that. Uh, and, and that guy's day is you know, filled with joy. And throughout the whole year, you're here working to make that happen. Uh, so I really enjoy that. Yeah.